at Medical Sciences Med Easy. In this session, we want to look at dose response curve of different drugs. And as we begin, we remind you to subscribe so that you're always notified whenever we release videos. So today we want to look at dose response curves of drugs, whereby these are plotted on the Cartesian graph using y-axis and x-axis, where on y-axis we put the response of the drug or the effect of the drug versus the log dose or what we call log concentration of the drug. Why do we determine the logarithm of concentration is to enable to obtain a sigmoid curve which always enables us to calculate many things or significant parts on the drug. And they are divided into two, whereby we have graded response, dose response curve, and we have quantal dose response curve. And we're going to see how them, how each curve, uh, each curve is used to determine different parameters. So we want to begin with the graded dose response curve, whereby this one with the graded dose response curve, here we are we give a certain drug and we keep monitoring to see its response in people by determining the dosage. And this dose response curve is the one that we use to determine the potency of the drug and drug efficacy. Where potency of the drug will be determined by the strength or the love to bind to receptor, what we call affinity. Whereas efficacy is determined by the intrinsic activity. Intrinsic activity complex of the drug. So the first thing we are going to look at potency, whereby A, we are going to determine the potency of the drug using graded dose potency of the drug, which is, which is defined as the amount of the drug. Potency is the amount of the drug required to produce a physiological response, produce a physiological response or pharmacological response of given magnitude. So the amount or the dosage of the drug required to bind to the receptor and produce a response is what we call potency. So the amount or the dosage of the drug. So if we have a graded dose response curve of log dose versus percentage response of a certain drug, we can easily use it to determine which drug is more potent than the other. For example, as we said that these produce sigmoid shape curves, if I have drug A with a sigmoid response and I have drug B so if I have these two drugs whereby I have drug A and drug B so this is drug A We have drug A and drug B. So after plotting them and getting a sigmoid shape, we determine the EC50 of each drug, whereby it is the response or the medium response, which is 50% response of certain drug. So when we get EC50 of a certain drug, whereby we go to 50% response, then we extrapolate where we meet the curve, we'll go and move, read at the x-axis. Read at the x-axis. And we find that this is the EC50 of drug A. And the E50 of drug B is 100. This is the EC50 of drug B. This is for drug B, this is for drug A. So we are seeing EC50 effective medium effective dose of drug A that is E50 is 1 
point zero, whereas drug B it is a hundred. So it means drug A needs a small dose to produce a response, whereas drug B needs a higher dose for it to produce an effective response in 50%. So what happens, we shall end up saying that drug A is more potent, is more potent than drug B. Why? Because we need much of the drug B to produce a response compared to drug A, which needs smaller dosage or smaller amount of the drug to produce a response. And the more the drug shifts to the left, the more it is potent. And the more drug, when it shifts to the right, it is less potent. So we are, that's why we are saying if we have another drug, maybe this is, this is drug C, we shall say that the drug C is less potent. Well, as drug, if we have another drug and shifts to the right, to the left, maybe this is drug Z. We shall say drug Z is has high potency. It has higher the highest potency, whereas drug C has the less potency. Why? Because the more it shifts to the right, the more the EC50 increases, the less less potent the drug. And the more the drug has little EC50, then the more the potent, meaning we need a little of the drug to produce the pharmacological response. So this is how we can use graded dose curve to determine which drug is more potent than the other during drug discovery and drug production. Another curve we can look at is the one that determines efficacy. So this one we are going to use it to determine the efficacy of the drug. Drug efficacy. To know which drug is more efficacious than the other. So this is B. And what is drug efficacy? This is the ability. This is the ability of a drug to produce a maximum response produce a maximum response after binding to the receptor. So it is the ability of the drug to bind to its receptor and produce a maximum physiological response within the body. If the drug binds, that is the, that is affinity, then and with intrinsic activity 100%, so that it can produce a maximum response is what we call efficacy. The ability of the drug to bind to its receptor and produce a maximum response. So we can use this curve to determine which drug is more efficacious than the other. For example, if we approach a graph of percentage response and the log dose concentration, and we get a sigmoid curve, which is reaching 100%, and we get another drug. And we have maybe another drug here. So this one, drug A, is producing. This is drug A. This is drug B. This is drug C. And we are saying drug A is producing 100% response. Meaning drug A is more efficacious, it is more efficacious. This one is more efficacious. Whereas we are seeing drug B it is producing like 80% response, hence it is less efficacious. Then the least efficacious we are seeing is drug C, which is producing 50% response. So Efficacy is determined by the intrinsic activity of the drug and is that that's why we compare it by on the response on the y-axis whereby if the drug is re producing 100% response that is more efficacious. If it is less, the way we are seeing drug B is less compared to drug A, this one is less efficacious and still we are seeing drug C also being less efficacious. 
So drug C is the least efficacious, whereas drug A is more efficacious in this experiment of ours. So this is how we can use this graded dose response curve to determine which drug is more efficacious than the other, which we have said efficacy is the ability of the drug to bind to the receptor and produce a pharmacological response. So those ones that produce 100% pharmacological response, we call them full agonist. Those which produce less than 100%, we call them partial agonists. So this is how we can determine the efficacy of the drug. Lastly, we can look at number two type of the dose response curve, which is quantal response curve. And this quantal response curve, these are experiments done in a population. These ones are done in a population and they depend on the law of all or none. All or none. Either when you give a drug at a population, it should produce a response or not at all. For example, if someone is vomiting and I give a drug like endocentral, if it does not stop vomiting, then there is no effect. And if it produces response by stopping to vomit, then it has produced all the effective or therapeutic required response. Or an example is also if I'm taking a sedative drug to make me sleep, and it does not make me sleep, that is nothing or none response. And if it makes me to sleep, then that is all. So it works under the principle of all or none response. So we do them on a population whereby we keep giving them this drug and we monitor them to determine the safety margin of the drug or to determine their therapeutic index. That if, I, if I'm given a drug, and this is the drug given here. And another, and another, after some time, we will continue giving. And it produces this, whereby this one is the effective dose. And this one is the lethal dose, or what we can call toxic dose. As we said that this one is the one that determines the safety of the drug when taken. So if I determine in the population, and I determine that so long as I give the drug in a population, and it produces effective dose in 50% of the population, so we shall use them to determine what we call ED50. This one will become ED effective dose in 50% of the population. Then still we can use it to determine Error 50, error D50 of the drug. So this one becomes lethal dose in 50% of the population, that is error D. So after determining both the effective dose in 50% of the population or the median effective dose and the median lethal dose, we can call it medium lethal dose, or we can even this one, we can call it medium effective dose. After determining their percentage, we can use this, we can use ED50 and LD50 or TD50 to determine the therapeutic index, whereby therapeutic index, therapeutic index, or is denoted as TI, is determined by getting lethal dose in 50% of the population, that is LD50, you divide by effective dose in 50% of the population. So according to our experiment, if the LD50 was, uh, was maybe 200, and we are saying the effective dose is maybe one, so you get 200, you divide by one, and you get your therapeutic index as 200. So this one becomes our therapeutic index. And we shall tell you that the larger the therapeutic index, if the therapeutic index of a drug is large or it is high, then this drug is very safe. This one is, very, is safe. 
But if you determine the therapeutic index of a drug and you find it is small or less, then this one, this drug is not safe. It is toxic, meaning if in taking a little dose, it becomes toxic in the body. But this one with the higher therapeutic index it means its lethal dose is very big. So you will need like more 10 tablets to, for it to reach the lethal dose which can exert adverse effect. Whereas this one, a, dr a drug with a small lethal dose, even making, taking more than two tablets, you already achieve lethal dose. So that's why we say the higher the lethal dose, the higher the LD50, then the safer that drug. And when the LD50 is small, it means that drug is not safe. And the deviation from the normal dosage, immediately it brings about lethal or adverse effects. And another concept we can determine is the safety margin of the drug, what we can call therapeutic window. So between LD50 and LD and ED50, this is what we call safety margin of the drug. Means when you take a dose between 0 0.1 and 200, in that range, the drug is safe, it cannot produce adverse reactions on the patient. This one we can call it safety margin of the drug, what we can call therapeutic window, the difference between LD50 and ED50 of the drug. That's what we call therapeutic window of the drug. So thank you so much for following where we have discussed in this video graded dose response curve and quantum response curve where we have seen graded dose they are used to determine the potency of the drug and efficacy of the drug. Whereas quantum they are used to determine the therapeutic index, they are used to determine the ED50, the LD50 and the therapeutic index, which can also enable us to determine the therapeutic window. So thank you so much for listening. Until the end, hope you have enjoyed this video. And we shall keep serving you more.